Hello everyone and welcome to my show. My name's Darren Connell. Thank you very much for joining me. Every stand-up comedian I know started a podcast seven days into the pandemic, but like me, in typical fashion, I've waited nearly two years. So thank you very much for joining us and I'll tell you what it's about. And to be honest, I don't even really know what it's going to be about. Um, it's been a strange two years for me and obviously I've not done stand-up in nearly two years. I've not done much acting and stuff, so I thought, do you know what, I really should bring this podcast back. A couple of people have been asking me, uh, the last one I did went pretty well. And uh, there was some big news this week as well that kind of pushed me towards bringing it back. One of my comedy heroes, uh, Norm Macdonald, passed away and it was devastating. So I don't know if you are aware of Norm Macdonald, but he had an amazing podcast. Uh, I think he's been doing stand-up for 25 years. Billy Madison and, and nearly every other Adam Sandler film, the guy was an absolute genius. A couple of years ago... I was feeling a wee bit down. Anytime I feel stressed or down or sad, I watch old school uh, American films like Planes, Trains and Automobiles. I love Chris Farley, uh, you know, all the old school like Ghostbusters. And one night I was watching, I went on a Norm Macdonald binge and um, I think he gives you like people that funny, like... Robin Williams, funny, or the Marx Brothers. I think Norm Macdonald's quite similar to that. Like, uh, they're that famous, you feel like you know them. I was like that when Robin Williams died away, uh, died away, passed away. You can see I've not done a gig in fucking two years. I don't even know how to string a sentence together. But I, I tweeted him one night and I was like, at Norm, um, I can't remember word for word what I said. I was like, I've went on a... I went on a binge tonight and your comedy is amazing. Uh, I think you give me a warmth that is similar to Chris Farley and John Candy. And he actually responded to my tweet and he started following me, which I find absolutely fucking mental considering I just tweet about sticking eckies up Mars and stuff. I'm like, Norm Macdonald's probably like, what's an ecky? So I, he kept following me and we spoke to each other a few times and he was really kind enough to like answer my questions and talk to me and stuff. But obviously when you're talking to somebody like that, it's pretty hard not to no act normal. So he's like, how's life? And I'm like, come to Glasgow and gig in Glasgow, mate. Every cunt loves you. But he'll be getting that out of everybody. So I never knew he had cancer. Um... At stages of my, like, life while watching him, he obviously looked like he was going through something and I did think he was sick at certain points because he had, like, crazy weight gain and crazy weight loss and stuff. So uh, when I found out that news that he passed away, man, it was a total gut punch. But it was a beautiful moment to see the whole comedy community respond to, like, how good he was. But... That's a massive, massive loss. And I've wanted to bring this back for a long time. But when he passed away, uh, I was like, fuck it, man. I'm bringing my podcast back. You've only got one life. So that's starting my podcast off with a tribute to probably my favourite comedian of all time. Him and the Marx Brothers. Oh, my God. So what have I been up to for two years? Um, it's been mental. I think the most important thing about this is I've not got a jingle ready yet. I've not got a poster ready. Uh, but I just want to get content out there because so many people keep asking me about this. So I think I'm just going to speak for the heart, try and be funny. I'm not going to get any guests in because I've been there and I've done it. And I'm not slagging my guests, but it's the kind of same guests. I know, isn't it? It's, the Scottish podcast circuit is... It's the same guest in every podcast and sometimes it can be a bit shite and I'm including myself in that. Like, people keep asking me, like, have you been to Peru? Are you still a vegan? Do you know Kevin Bridges? Oh, here, I seen Kevin Bridges once. He was in a barber's in Airdrie and he was getting a haircut. Uh, it's mad, isn't it? And you're like, what? Gonna fuck up. So, 
standalone podcast, no guests. I might get you to ask questions at one point or whatever. So, I the last two years have been mental. I've been living with my family during a pandemic because I've been trying to buy a house. I've rented rooms and all that nonsense. And I thought during this uh, pandemic, I would like to own a house for once and think about the future. And that has just been unfucking bearable, man. Like, before that happened, I had a fringe down past my eyebrows. And now I'm like slap heed bald. So a lot of things have happened, but it's been quite funny being back in with my man, my da. I don't know if anybody's got like a old school Scottish man da, like sitting watching the telly. And my da will just start randomly singing or tapping or whistling. Which is not that annoying, but when you're doing it 40 times a day, so like you're watching a football and he'll just be like, Morning has broken like the first morning, Blackbird has spoken. Damn, damn. Do you know Cat Stevens got stranded out in the ocean in the middle of a raft? And I'm sitting there, not even blinking, watching the telly. And it, it was like five days passed. And he said, God, if you spare me, I'll give my life to you. And then he gets spared. And then that's how his name's Yusuf Islam now. Did you know that? Cat Stevens gets stranded out in a, la- a raft. I'm like, da, I'm trying to watch the fucking Celtic game, mate. Gonna calm down. Or he'll just randomly like bust. If he gets something 34 now, he'll bust into my room four in the morning. Uh, did you leave a spoon in the sink? Aye. I'm like, aye, aye. I forgot to wash it. All right. Something rang with your head? I'm like, what? Something rang with your head? Go and get that checked. I'm like, duh. I'm going to start boxing with you running the fucking garden, mate. And my ma is just uh, speaks in her own language. Like, uh, chips she'll peel totties to make chips and she'll call them chippers i don't know if anybody ever calls them that or uh, jalapenos she'll call them filipinos so i've had to learn a new language to communicate to my ma <laughs> but cat stevens is fucking amazing by the way like it made me go on a youtube uh, search about him and it turns out he did get stranded out in a boat in the ocean and that's why he changed his name and became muslim i'm sure don't I mean, obviously, you'll quote, they'll probably get cancelled. Like, he's always been a Muslim or something, but aye, Cat Stevens gets stranded out in a dinghy and he prayed to God, and that's why he's Muslim. Imagine if that happened to Garlic Gary Barlow. I was going to say Garlic Barlow there, sorry. I've not had a gig in two years. Forgive me if I can't speak. What else have I done? I've had a hair transplant, so that's why my fucking skull looks mental. I don't know how mental it looks. Does it look mental, Paul? Does it look all right? Does the hairline look crazy? No. Uh, I had a hair transplant at the start of lockdown when I lost all my work. Uh, my hair followed it as well. Like chunks of hair falling out my head in the shower. And I used to tweet about being bald all the time. And then a hair transplant company got in touch with us and they said they would do me a deal. Bobby rates if I get a hair transplant and I can pay it up, like on tick. So basically I get a hair transplant on tick. And see when you go in, like uh, the day all sorts, you can get a beard transplant. Uh, you can get like a t- tummy tuck. And what else can you get? You can get this mad, I can't even remember what it's called. But basically they inject something into your dick and it gives you better erections. Now, imagine sitting in an office and you've never met this guy before and he's trying to punt this to me as well. And I'm like, mate, I need to get my hole first before I start getting injections into my dick. But a beard transplant, how mental would that be? So I underestimated a hair transplant. I had a, I went in on the Friday and I had it booked. And then I had a PT session booked on the Saturday and he's like, no, you're no, you're no moving for 28 days. So I had to cancel all work and everything and basically just chilled for 28 days and I put on about two stone. But 
at least when my hair grows back, it will look amazing. And I'm no one of these cunts that are going to let, you know how like people disappear for four months, get a hair transplant and then they come back and they've got like long blonde hair down to their arse and everybody's like, mate, have you had work done? I'm like, no. Nah. <laughs> like, no, nah, mate, I've not had anything done. You're like, mate, you look like you've had a hair transplant. No, nah, mate, it's just, I get sunbeds and all that and it just grows in better because the sunbed on your scalp makes it better. I've tried it all. Biotin shampoo. I was taking horse shampoo and all. It's called uh, Men and Tail. So it's actually shampoo for horses' tails. No wonder I went fucking bald. Like full blown industrial scale, like paint on your scalp. I, I do regret telling everybody I got it. I wish I did just reappear. Like, yeah, well, home. Plus, I think I suit a skinhead now. I was saying to Paul, I think I look like Scott Brown, but if his corpse get washed up in a beach. <laughs> um, so I the transplant happened and I'm not going to get a, a beard transplant yet. How long does it take to go back in? That's another thing I underestimated. Um, I thought you would be in and out. <laughs> in like four days or something I never realised for some stupid reason it's an actual uh, operation so it takes about six months for it to look normal you should have seen I got a haircut before this podcast because I looked like a full blown pedo like it was bushy and growing in, growing in long at the sides but really short at the top and I'm like nah I'm no I'd rather wear a wig than let you see me with that. But it takes about six months for it to get to normal, then about 12 months for it to to be fully grown back in. Uh, I think I just got it because I was bored. Honestly, man, I'm not even that self-conscious about being bored, uh, about being bald. I like to do mad shit to get material. And I thought that would be funny. And then I got it done. And I was like, that's ah, not that funny, man. Can you take it back? <laughs> Plus, I really love going into Turkish barbers and giving them like 20 quid to get a Turkish guy to just shave my tire head. I've got a pure ginger beard, I know, so he slaughters me for that. Which is pretty cool, talking to a Turkish guy, because I found out Turkish people don't get ginger hair. It's mad, isn't it? Does anybody who gets ginger hair? It's only kind of Europeans. Scottish and Irish, mate. <laughs> Aye. Imagine if you seen a Turkish guy with ginger hair, but it'd freak you out. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a white guy with an afro. Aye. <laughs> exist. Do you think Turkish people go in for ginger beard transplants? Ginger poop transplants. <laughs> Thankfully, I've no. Uh, Got ginger poops. Poops. Right, so, hi. Nothing's really been happening. Uh, I thought I would start a podcast. Uh, I started... I fucked the veganism, by the way. Completely fucked it. See, before lockdown, I was, like, militant vegan. Uh, really slim, healthy. I was doing boxing training five days a week. To the point, my cousin's a professional boxer. My cousin was like, ah... You could probably do a white collar fight. It was fittest I've ever been, 34 in a waist, and I fucked it. Absolutely fucked it, man. I've put on about five stone, lost my hair. Sometimes I go in my bed at night and I'm like, don't wake up in the morning. So what did I do? Started a podcast. Yes. Like everybody else. But I'm back at the boxing training now, and it's a new boxing trainer. He's 50, I think he's about 53. And it's mental how people don't listen to you. I don't know if he's taking the piss or if he's not listening to me. So he's like, what's your diet like? And I'm like, I try my best to be vegan, but I eat a lot of processed vegan junk food and that's why I've put a lot of weight on. And my skin was fucked, so I have to start... I went to a doctor and the doctor told me to kind of start eating fish again. So I've been eating fish now and again. But I don't eat chicken, I don't eat beef and I, I, mince or any stuff like that. And I've no done it for over two years. And he'll be like, right, so the night 
you have a steak? And I'm like, no, I don't eat steaks, mate. And he's like, have a steak a night, right? And a beer. And I'm like, mate, I, I'm teetotal. Like, I've not had a drink in six years. And he's like, how? I'm like, because alcoholism runs through my family, mate, and I don't want to die. So every time I do a workout, he's like, uh, you've earned your beer the night, you've earned your steak the night. And I'm like, I just need to accept that he's half his fucking nut or he's taking the piss. Just like my dad when he sings Cat Stevens songs. It feels weird to not having a guest. I feel like this is a fucking hostage video or something. <laughs> if this was a hostage video, I'd be fucked. I'd be like, do you know what? Just... Just get the food no ready. <laughs> the terrorists would be like, they wouldn't even be asking for money. They'd just be like, gonna use A4 paper and fucking. <laughs> Speaking of dying, I was walking the other day. I walked past a, like a funeral home. Do you know what only costs £900 to get cremated in Glasgow? Is that no mental? That is cheap as fuck. Does it make me mental or sad that I was buzzing? Like, <laughs> I was like, I can't believe it. Is it only in Glasgow that it costs nine hundred pound to get cremated? Also, um, I get a really bad uh, ulcer in my mouth. I've been getting a lot of dental work done, so I get all my black fillings took it, and I get replaced got them replaced with white fillings and it's cost more than £900. So my head went to, oh, I can't kill myself now because my mouth cost more than a fucking cremation. So I need to get my money's worth first. 15, 20 year maybe. Then maybe I'd do it. Who knows? But £900, man, that's fucking... I'm, bu I'm buzzing with that. Can I pay it up? A pound a week? Hopefully I'll live till I'm 80. Because it's like four grand to get buried. You know, I'm not going to slag anybody's podcast and it's not like I dig at anybody, but it's like, uh, I certainly don't want to turn into like a mental health kind of thing. Uh, I'm in recovery. I don't drink. I've been pretty vocal about that. So people that I hang around with are like positive mental attitudes and it's like to toxic positivity in a way. And I think... You're allowed to be sad. You're allowed to be annoyed. And I remember at the start, uh, people were fucking mental in this country. Like, within five days, I think I lost... I lost my entire career, basically. I think I lost something like £14,000 of work. So it's like having a rug pulled out for you, right? My flat get fucked. I broke up with my partner. Back in with the family. And, you know, I've been doing stand-up comedy since I've been 18. And all of a sudden, it's all gone. So I think I'm entitled to have a bad day. And I remember I tweeted something along the lines of... Again, this is a suicide joke, man. Fucking hell. Uh, I don't want my... I wouldn't kill myself during a pandemic because I don't want my family to wear masks while singing hymns. So, a Catholic suicide joke. And I remember a guy was like, ah, you can't say that, mate. I'm like, how no? I can say whatever the fuck I want. It's my Twitter. But he's like, no, you can't say that. And I'm like, I can say that. It's how I, it's how I feel. And I'm tweeting it. And it's also, I think it's funny as fuck. Do you think it's funny? <laughs> Muffled Catholic hymns at a funeral. Well, no, my funeral, I'd be getting cremated. So. You still have a funeral with cremation? Oh, really? Fuck. I'm a pure Catholic. In fact, Catholics don't get cremated. My dad was cremated being a Catholic. Really? Yeah. Was it for nine or a quid? No, I think it was for it was fucking, I don't know, less than that, put it that way, put it really well. Oh, really? That's... Catholics get cremated, for sure. Um, why am I jealous of your dad? Like... <laughs> <laughs> that's like see when you're talking to an old person that's like 80 now and they say oh my mortgage was only four thousand pounds you're like uh are you 147 you cunt because i'm looking at studio flats and mary hall that are like 89 grand 
Honestly, I've been looking at flats, right? And I'm like, see if I fucking sit in my bed, I could raise my leg out and touch the kitchen sink and they're wanting a 40 grand deposit. No one our cunts are fucking topping themselves. Uh, can we keep that in? Nah, keep it in. And then everybody's like, ah, oh no, you've got to be positive and happy. Go up to the waterfalls and jump in. Jump into... <laughs> Cold water therapy, man. Honestly, I don't know why I hate that so much. I done it, and it makes you feel amazing, but it's toxic positivity. Paul, you're not like that, are you? Not in the slightest. Do you see where I'm coming from? Aye, it's the reason that you don't like it because it's passionate. It's the old shit. Exactly, because sometimes I feel like I get confused, like I'm the rain man. And I try to get my feelings across and I, I get angry and people don't understand me. But especially during these times when everybody is struggling with depression and stress and stuff. Because I thought I would never have that again because I was flying high, man, and bossing it. And then a pandemic happened. But then all these mad cold water therapy therapists have appeared out anywhere. And they're like, obviously... I'm taking the piss here, but it's like if you've got cancer, you get chemo, don't you? If you've got depression, you go to the, the doctor. You don't go up to the fucking waterfalls and pull your banger out and put it underneath a waterfall and then all of a sudden you feel amazing. Obviously, you do feel amazing, but, you know, if you're fucked, you should go to the doctors. Do you know what I mean? Instead of paying somebody that used to punt you gear, £50, to quote Gandhi quotes at you. It's a bit mental, isn't it? Uh, I'm going to get done in after this, isn't I? They'll find me in a waterfall. <laughs> floating face in. He's got bricks around his ankles. Aye, that does my tits and all that stuff, so... I tell you another thing I've no, um, I forgot about, like completely forgot about, and now they've returned is uh, charity buskers, charity what are they called? Charity muggers. Charity muggers, man. Dear Lord, uh, like just gonna let me be dead inside in peace, mate. Like when I'm walking down the street, how fucking brutal are these cunts? Like. I donate money to charity. I when I done stand up, I do stand up gigs, and all the fee can go to charity. And I forgot how annoying they were, man. And you're walking down the main street, and it's like, "Hi, man, how you doing? Can I talk to you for a couple of seconds? Um, do you like pirates in the Amazon jungle?" And you're like, "No, no, mate. Like I used to like all that shit, but now I, even though I'm a vegan, I would fucking to get away for you, I would eat its head off, like." Their own commission or not, aren't they? Aye. Now, see if they were selling cremations. <laughs> that would be a different story. <laughs> punting, <laughs> punting cremations. Jehovah's Witnesses chapping your door, mate, you want a cremation. By the way, um, I know that we'll edit it this together and we'll make it cleaner and stuff, uh, but Paul is like my director, producer. So, like, he does all that stuff, and I do this stuff. It's like Joe Rogan and Jamie, but I won't talk to Paul like he's a rancid piece of shit. <laughs> I mean, Rogan does talk to that guy like he's a piece of shit. I would never do that to you, Paul. That is mental. If I get 100 million off Spotify, I would. I've decided to take a break from stand-up comedy, um, the way it's returning, for health reasons as well, like, I'm fucked, I'm absolutely fucked with stress right now and other things, I want to use this podcast for accountability, to keep myself fresh and sharp, uh, just keep the comedy brain ticking, hopefully, I feel like a punch-drunk boxer, man, like Tyson towards the end of his life, when he's just getting fucking leathered, fat as fuck in the ring, at least he was getting paid for it. I'm just fat as fuck and I'm not getting paid now. But I'm taking a break and I want to try and get really fit and healthy 
hopefully my hair grows back normal and I can just return to gigging and acting next year. Probably a wee bit hardcore to... I've always kind of done things backwards, like when people are feeling down or stressed, they, they kind of hide away. But I don't want to hide away. And, you know, see when I started being a vegan and I got really healthy and fit, I was very quick to shout from the mountaintop of how well I was doing. Or anytime anybody asked me for an interview, I was like more than happy. But now it's kind of fucked a wee bit. I'm like avoiding people and no talking to people. And I'm like, nah, you need to get a wee bit of fire lit underneath you to find out who you really are as a person. Because that's why I was complaining about the toxic positivity people. Like, I want to know what you're like when you're having a bad day. Because uh, life is pretty shit, isn't it? I mean, it's amazing. Family's amazing. Pals are amazing. But it's tough. And this pandemic has made it really tough as well. So... Obviously, I want to do it for entertainment reasons, but I'd like to do it for accountability, I know. So, it feels weird not doing stand-up. i done my first gig when I was 18. Um, 34 now. Uh, my first gig, I was so shite, I never done it again until I was 22. And then from 22 to 34, I was non-stop. So, I... I think that is my last gig was Friday the 12th of March at the Glasgow Comedy Festival last two Marches ago, nearly two years ago. And it was a solo show on a Friday night and I'm looking forward to getting back to it but with restrictions and masks and all that, I'm just, I'm not ready yet man, I need a break and what a relief it is to just admit and say out loud, no, I need a break. I think that's why in Glasgow, um, we're all, we're all fucked basically, because you just say yes to everything and then you feel like a failure when you're not saying yes, when it's all right to say no, do you know what I mean? Oh my God, is this turned into a toxic positivity podcast? Everybody get your banger up and bang her out and go up to the camp, she's get some cold water therapy. Feeling very smug right now. Literally everybody's getting cancelled and I'm sitting here very, very smug. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, I think I was... Uh, I'm a troll, right? And I date for funny reasons. I don't think I'm bad-natured, but I love tweeting shit and I love annoying people on Twitter. I think people have forgot what Twitter is. I'm a comedian, or I'd like to think that I'm a comedian, Every single thing I tweet is for a laugh and a joke. People take themselves too serious, right? But all I'm saying is, thank fuck I deleted all my tweets. Because I went through some tweets for a couple of years ago, man, and I'd be cancelled right now. So I'm sitting here with a cheeser on my face, feeling better than all my comedian mates. But I think I tweeted something about Celtic and Rangers and... Uh, uh, a couple of Rangers fans quote tweeted it. You know how everybody's doing this thing that you have an opinion and then they go through your tweets and they quote it and they do that. This you, mate. <laughs> like I give a fuck. So somebody quote tweeted it and done that. This you, mate. And I quote tweeted it and I done that. I, mate. I don't care. Like, what are you going to do? I, I've literally fucking lost everything in my life. And I'm back in living with my man, my dad. Like, you can't take anything away from me, you cunt. But what I love about that is, like, see people that... Because they don't want... They don't... They're not offended, right? N none of these guys or girls are offended. They just want to ruin your life. And uh, what I love about it, though, is see when they quote tweet somebody. No me. But they quote tweet somebody. Um, this is disgraceful. I can't believe you said this. Um, you should get sacked. And then somebody goes through their tweets for like nine years ago and they'll co-tweet them and they'll say, they've tweeted something mental like, I just ate a baby for my dinner the night. And you're like, well, you can't really try and cancel people, mate, if you're eating babies, can you? Twitter is an absolute bin fire. Um, I would say, I mean, this is going to go at my Twitter, but... 
I would say social media. I don't really use Facebook anymore, but Twitter is probably one of the reasons why everybody is absolutely fucked. Like, you can go on your phone one day and I'm seeing, like, cute puppy videos to racism, bigotry, people getting hit with cars, porn, and then you've got your CNN, all, all your bad news of the world just, like, in your fucking brain to these like hypersensitive people that want to get you cancelled. So that's why I tweet about sticking eckies up Mars and I don't change the subject. Is that right? Do you know, ironically, I've never stuck an ecky up Mars and I tweet about it quite a lot to the point that I'm kind of known for it. Like, I'm the guy. <laughs> like, sticky <laughs> situations. Oh, I've shot my pants a couple of times. I was thinking where somebody going, do you want, do you want an stuck up your ass? I don't actually do it. I mean, I wouldn't do it now because I'm sober, but if I wasn't sober, I would absolutely stick an ecky up my arse. I would get somebody to do it if somebody offered, and I'd film it for the podcast, and we'd do a thing for it, and, you know, I would take an ecky through my mouth, and then I would compare it to the ecky up the arse and then we would see what one was better. Is there eckies even cutting about anymore? This is how old, old I feel. Right? Aye. Aye. Most people take Monday now. Oh, really? Proud of pure form. Fuck that, man. I'm definitely having a moment of like, when I was a boy, it wasn't like that. Like, Transmit came back. Carnage. You're seeing all these wee guys just out their box. Did you see the guy that buried a bottle of Bucky though? Aye, um, I was mentally impressed until I found out that it was a stunt for a radio program. Bastard. I know. I mean, when I seen him dig up the bottle of Bucky, I mean, I just seen the forty, but imagine doing that at Tina Park. Have you ever been to Tina Park? Like, Tina Park is an absolute cesspit. The fact that we just accepted that, you know what, people die here every single year and that's just the way it is. Like... <laughs> what was the average death rate of Tina Park? I went to it, it's like there's going to be drug deaths. I remember I went there one time and there was a guy that gets stabbed like 16 times. I remember like seeing the cubicle in the toilets, so disgusting, right? I had a bottle of water and I dropped the water on the mud and like, see if you drank that, man, you're going to fucking die. So that's why Tina Park is not here anymore. Here, imagine, <laughs> I don't think this podcast is going to lie, uh, last for long, is it? But imagine burying that bottle of Bucky at a festival, right? And then you were the guy that went to dig it back up and you digged up a skeleton. <laughs> and it turns out it was like... <laughs> Haunted. Should I get cremated, mate? That's what I'm saying. Do you get cremated with your clothes on? What I'm going to do as well, um, I think at the end, if you're all right with that, Paul, um, I'm going to play a tune of a Scottish band, like any up-and-coming Scottish band, and just to give them like a shout-out. Aye, exposure. It doesn't have to be this one, but um, I try. I want to do something different. Uh, and for the next episode, I think we'll we will do a Q and A. So if you've got any questions, or if you've seen any funny videos, or anything you want to talk about, just tweet me and ask me, and we'll get it sorted out. Um, I'm also going to do a buy me a coffee thing. So I'll put the link underneath it. If you've enjoyed it, obviously this is just the teething process of us finding our voice and it feels a wee bit weird just staring directly into a camera. I'm used to having an audience, like there'd be coke fueled maniacs screaming at me right now and I'd feel at peace right now, but because it's just me and Paul in a studio and I'm trying to make a camera laugh, I feel like my heart's going to explode. But if you want to buy me a coffee, then it goes towards all this stuff, um, it will cover costs, so that would be appreciated, and thank you very much.